thank you uh with that i think anil if i may thank ask you to uh pray please for the rest of our session okay and then I'll let's pray <clears throat> almighty god in heaven father thank you so much for this privilege to come as a group father to worship you to praise you and honor you lord we just pray continue to give us more and more understanding father inspire the speaker inspire such an father as he reveals your word to us more and more lord and father do bless each one of us and those who are not able to make it bless them look after and provide for all your people lord and now god just inspire this session may it inspire the speaking the listening and the fellowshipping father lord put your presence here now we pray and ask all this in jesus holy name amen Amen. Thank you so much, Anil. Let me share my screen, and then I think we can start. Hey, <clears throat> very good evening, and it's a pleasure to uh, be back with you all. Um, I'm glad and good to have a chance to catch up with you all just before we could start the Bible study. I, as I was preparing for uh, for today's uh, lesson, which is about, I'll just manage the video screen so that. Okay. <clears throat> so as I was preparing, uh, I, I I just realized that last time when I led, uh, we touched upon Apostle Paul's letters to the Romans, uh, and then I realized that before uh, doing that, I could have covered uh, what is the genre of letters and how does that help us to understand the New Testament letters. And then I realized uh, I should have covered that before, but then. There's never a uh, better time like today. So uh, today, even though uh, our topic is to um, survey uh, Apostle Paul's letter to the Corinthians, but before the, that, I would like uh, us to go through understanding the genre of letters. So genre of letters. So one key to interpreting the Bible is to consider consider the genre. That is the type of the literature we are studying because we do not read poetry as if it were a list of laws nor proverbs as if it were the uh, it was a statement of theology. However, we are very familiar with reading letters. We expect a straightforward statements of facts and explanation. Now, this is generally true for the New Testament letters. But there are a few features of the letters that we should pay special attention to. And what are those? So one of the greatest importance is the fact that these New Testament letters are occasional documents. And what does it mean? They were written as a response to a particular, particular occasion, a specific circumstance, rather than being a timeless essays about theological truth. For example, the explanation that Apostle Paul gives to the people in Corinth is tailored to their situation and their belief. He does not always argue in a way that is applicable to all the situations. Now, when Paul says that it is a shame for a man to have long hair, his argument work in Corinthians and in many other cultures, but it does not work in every culture you know although some behaviors we must um, admit that some behaviors are ungodly and shameful no matter what society or what culture we live in whereas the concept of honor shame are they are cultural constructs now apostle paul 
take some of the arguments about uh, sexuality for, uh, from the ancient Greek idea that uh, that the, that time it was prevalent that the spirit is good but the body is bad. So different arguments might be needed in modern society to convey Paul's conclusion. So that's their occasional document. The second fact is that we do not always know the circumstances as well as we would like to know. Even for Paul's letter, we, we now know date, location, but we don't always know what the people were thinking and what part of the conversation had already been conducted before we read particular statement. Now, for some of the general epistles like James, uh, Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, we know very little about date and locations. For such document, we need to use an approach called as we need to create a hypothesis. Now the guiding principle in creating a hypothesis is what sort of circumstances would best explain what we see in this letter. What are the circumstances? And that becomes a working hypothesis, which we always keep testing it, whether this circumstance help us to understand the text. So that's how we keep on working on our hypothesis. Now, let me give you one example, very famous example from 1st Timothy chapter 2, verse 12 to 15. Let's read. Apostle Paul says, I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a, ma uh, over a man. She must be quiet. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived and become a sinner. But woman will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith, love and holiness with propriety. So uh, uh, now these verses are very puzzling on the surface. Why would he say that Adam was not deceived? Why would he say that the woman would be saved through childbearing? This does not match with what he wrote in other letters, which means there was apparently something unusual going on in Ephesus. Now, we may not know exactly what was going on, but we can suggest some possibilities that can help explain why this restriction on women do not match what he wrote in his other letters. So in this case, to understand why he wrote uh, like this about women is to do with what was happening there in Ephesus during that time. So it would be unfair to take that context bring it to every other context or every other time period or every other uh, society or culture. Now the third aspect, letters have various, uh, <clears throat> where am I, yeah. letters have various uh, subgenres. They generally begin with somewhat standardized greetings, you know, um, a prayer, for the recipients and they often have greetings at the end. In the middle, various topics will be addressed, discussed, sometimes with sarcasm, sometimes with an imaginary person asking question to further the discussion and sometimes with supporting points to answer to the objection that was raised during the conversation. Now, Paul's first uh, letter to Timothy has similarities to a letter from a political leader to a relig uh, to his regional subordinate giving instructions to let the citizens know what to expect and to help ensure that the subordinate carry through the wishes of the superior officer now whether or not paul consciously adopted this style of letter we don't know but it provides us a useful angle for us to understand the way the letter is written. Then the fourth is the bulk of most letter is argument, not in the sense of disagreement, but meaning that conclusions are supported by reasoning. Sometimes the writer will start with begin with the conclusion and sometimes he will work toward it by making the first point and so on and so forth. In either case, 
we need to see the argument as a whole rather than lifting verses out of the context why because this may be a several paragraph or even several chapters sometimes the discussion continues sometimes links with the frequent use of participles indicating causation or conclusion like for example the greek word gir which usually translated for and we read it so many places for for this for this therefore this so we need to see how the logic works before we know what each passage is trying to say so now we have seen the four uh, aspects of the genres what is that the first one was the <clears throat> these letters are occasional that means um, directed to specific situations circumstances then uh, we do not know uh, circumstances what were there we know the date and time but we don't know what was just said or how was the situation so we create a hypothesis then we have seen that the letters have subgenres so it could be various things greetings discussion uh, favor and then it also has in the middle part argument putting the point debating it giving the reasons now this should help us this pointer should help us to see any of the letters uh, to understand from the new testament and now that we have a basic understanding to how to how to see from a uh, uh, letter now let's delve deep into apostle paul's letter to the church in corinth corinthians in order to understand what and why apostle paul is writing to that church and to understand that we need to understand the background of first corinthians and it's interesting what was that now corinthian corinth was an ancient greek city but it was destroyed in a war with rome in the second century bc and it was left vacant for 100 years the city was built again in 44 bc as a roman colony as a roman colony to start the new city rome sent former slaves to uh, from rome to corinth and the new city therefore became one of the few places in the empire where former slaves and the lower class people could rise in the status now the city had a reputation of aristocrats with lower class manners and excessive indulgence in sex and alcohol at that time um, the author paul sampley he very nicely summarized the situation in Corinth at that time and he says Corinth's reputation for wealth without culture and for the abuse of the poor by the wealthy was well known and now as the new city with social mobility and acceptance of social change it was also a place for new religions which found an easier foothold Corinth had a large temple of Aphrodite uh, the goddess of love and the temples of newer religions such as uh, Asclepius, the god of healing. Now, Apostle Paul founded the church in Corinth in the year about AD 50 or so. Now, the mention of Gallio in Acts chapter 18, uh, verse 12 to 18, is one of the very few events in Acts that can be correlated with secular history. Now, Luke says, Apostle Paul spent 18 months in Corinth, starting in the synagogue, then working next door at the house of the God-fearing Gentile. Crispus, the synagogue ruler, became a believer. Now, however, many Jews rejected the gospel and accused Paul of causing trouble. Now, the Gallio threw the case out of court and the unbelieving Jews beat up Sosthenes, the synagogue ruler, as we also read it in Acts chapter 18, verse 1 to 17. It seems that this same person, Sosthenes, become a believer. And the same man named Sosthenes helped Apostle Paul write 1 Corinthians from Ephesus, as we read it in chapter 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 and 16, verses 19. We do not know whether he moved to Ephesus or just he was there to visit Paul. 
this person Sosthenes. But after Paul left Corinth, Apollos went to Corinth as we read it in Acts chapter 19 verse 1. Now, 1 Corinthians is actually Paul's second letter to Corinth. He refers to a previous letters in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 9 and tries to correct a misunderstanding of what he had written. Uh, Paul wrote 1 Corinthians a couple of years after he left Corinth. He heard reports from people in Chloe's household as we read it in chapter 1 verse 11 and received a letter from Corinthians asking him about several topics. And perhaps this person, Sosthenes, he would have brought the letters with him to Apostle Paul. Now, as a result, this letter from Apostle Paul, unlike his other letters, organized largely as an issue by issue response to Corinthian problems. But it is not just a hodgepodge of unrelated questions. The problem of division, sex, lawsuit, spiritual gifts, etc. are, according to Gorman, he says, it's a, I missed it. According to Gorman, uh, he says, all symptomatic, uh, he summarized that, these all issues are symptomic of a more fundamental problem. A failure to understand the real life consequences of the gospel of Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now Paul believed that the message of salvation went hand in hand with moral obligations. And if we are to join to Christ in salvation, we are also to join in him in the way we live. And in this letter, Apostle Paul gives solution to practical problems. Behavioral advice that he believes is logically demanded by the gospel. We could say that uh, the theme of the letter is holiness or sanctification. What it means for people to be set apart for God's purpose. So what was the message of first Corinthians? Now the problem in Corinthians had been evaluated in various ways. Some scholars have attempted to find a common source to all the issues and, and they identified first as Gnosticism. Now, which means it, uncom it encompasses a variety of belief and practices, but is generally characterized by an emphasis on a secret knowledge that leads to spiritual enlightenment and solution. And only few have that uh, secret knowledge. Then the second issue that was going was the Hellenistic Jewish wisdom speculation. What does it mean? It was a blending of Jewish religious thought and Hellenistic uh, philosophical ideas, particularly those from Greek tradition. Now, this fusion of influences created a unique philosophical and religious worldview that sought to reconcile with Jewish monotheism with the philosophical inquiries of a border Hellenistic world. That was also having the problem and the rest were factionism, division, conflict with Apostle Paul, dualistic thought coupled with oversized Christology, the study of end times they had various things. Now <clears throat> other writers, they adopt a more eclectic reading of the evidence. Looking at the Corinthian situation as a patchwork of issues, the author Warrington he, for example, identified five basic problems in this church. The first is partisan attachment to Christian leaders. And we see a lot of, I belong to him, I belong to him, I am the follower of this. Then we see continued adherence to cultural values. It takes the uh, higher weightage than following these spiritual values. Then there is also a pride and insult in using spiritual gift. There is sexual issues and there is disagreement over ecology, including the resurrection and the believer's presence reign. Now, Warrington and other argues we should identify a variety of cultural, philosophical and religious influences that impinge on this church 
located at one of the major crossroad of the Roman Empire. That was the situation then. Now, what is the outline of 1st Corinthians? Let's see the outline. How, how does it flow? Sorry. It starts with opening greetings and thanksgiving. Now, then Paul takes one by one issues. Paul's response to report about the Corinthian church. And then he takes division over leadership and wisdom. Then he handles immorality in community by handling incest and church discipline, lost it among believers and prostitution. Then he goes on Paul's response to Corinthians letter. Now, first he uh, addressed the issues that they were facing. Now he is addressing to the concerns that they sent our letter. So what was that? The concern was about marriage. What was about marriage? About marriage and divorce. General principle, remain as you were when called about bit uh, about uh, bit throttle then concerning food that were sacrificed to the idols conduct and and then it was conduct governed uh, conduct governed by knowledge or love having but not using freedom eating in temples and home then he goes on addressing the concerns about worship general uh, rules and head coverings the lord's supper spiritual gift and then he goes on to a deeper into spiritual gift unity and diversity of the gifts the way of love the use of tongue the prophecy and other gifts then he come on to resurrection of the dead then he comes on to concerning the collection travel plans and apollo's visit and he concludes with final exhortation blessings and greetings that's the how methodologically he takes one issue at a time one concern explain and goes down <clears throat> now how he would have composed such thing composing the first corinthians now the array of issues that apostles uh, paul takes up in first corinthians is almost dizzying he covers division question about marriage sexuality uh, litigation idol meets head covering right uh, banqueting, Lord's Supper, spiritual gift, resurrection. This letter gives us an electrical feel. Now, some students of the letter um, have concluded that its fragmented nature, by fragmented nature means uh, uh, by issue by issue as Apostle Paul addressed it, it demonstrated that the letter might be a compilation of various letters Apostle Paul wrote to Korean church. But this electric nature stems rather from the multifaceted nature of Corinthians problem as they worked out the meaning of their new faith in Christ. So that was a new uh, believers fighting with the culture, fighting with themselves, fighting with the society and fighting with how the, the overall situation was. And we must remember that when we go through 1st Corinthians. Now, ideally, uh, the scope of uh, the Bible study series that I am doing, uh, the New Testament survey, is to look at each book of the New Testament individually and then we look them all as a whole. Now, our overview approach is rather on a skimming and scanning basis that is we review various aspect of book like its author date circumstances audiences political and geographical situation but while i was reading um, apostle paul's letter to the corinthians from uh, ian howard's book the new testament survey i felt uh, in my study uh, in our bible study here I need to jump a little deeper than just remaining on the survey for the this particular book that we are doing. And hence, uh, I want to next week dive a little deeper on the more complicated issues that Apostle Paul has mentioned and we'll go deep into it. Like, for example, we'll go each by each when he says division in church. What does he mean? How is it being handled? What divisions were mentioned? How does he bring what what? In his letter, what style does he use to bring the people together? How does he um, address the issue of immorality? Then how does he take one by one um, 
questions upon concerns of Corinthians, uh, questions, marriage, meat offered to idols, worship and resurrection. I wanted to take part of this today, but this I realized that it has to flow in a, in, in a, in a sequence and hence I have to put this one uh, as one separate thing as I come in the next uh, alternate week and then we'll cover these details in much detail how he handles that that's part of this now uh, the the book basically for the uh, uh, Ian, Ian Howard Marshall his concise New Testament survey uh, is very useful along with the class notes uh, from Dr. Michael Morrison that's I refer it most of my classes comes from here so we'll continue to refer them as we come uh, next week for these things so today i would like to conclude it here and we would discuss uh, about the background uh, about uh, the how apostle paul wrote and then we'll go next week there so now we'll open up with comments and questions and stop my screen share So here is something. So, so today when I reverse reading it, that means what the book is about and then, then looking back at what we book it, is, then I realized, oh my goodness, First Corinthians did. Apostle Paul had to put so many things so nicely, so put together. Often we took many things uh, or many subjects from there. But today I realized that it is indeed a, 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 a letter that was quite nicely put together to address one by one issue. So uh, if what was your impression when you uh, about the letter of Apostle Paul to the Corinthians? Does today's uh, information adds any different aspect to it? Or you had fairly good idea of what it was? How does today's information help? And then we'll of course take some uh, comments and some uh, clarifying questions as well. Scotchin, to just very briefly comment on the question you asked. Uh, I think uh, the way you brought up the various issues. Uh, Sometimes we have not looked at it in the way you explained that he had to deal with so many issues. And uh, that is very helpful. I thought maybe this is one long letter he's just writing. Uh, and uh, as he writes, he's dealing with these issues. But then uh, I think uh, issue based, you know, and the issue based study that you will do, I think can be very, very useful. So, um, uh, I, I looked at it as a composite rather than the issue. So I think that was very helpful to know. Also, you the uh, going through the genre of the book, the literature style, right? Uh, uh, I think uh, that is very, very helpful. I didn't realize that Corinth had this social problem of uh, rich and poor and people treating one another in a shabby manner the wealthy treating the poor in a shabby manner. So that is uh, very, very helpful. Uh, you mentioned something about, uh, you know, the issues had a context and uh, we had to deal with, in other words, it is, it is a situation that existed at that particular time. Uh, would you say that we can draw principles from that? Uh, for today's for for today's situation, uh, is it uh, worthy to use it for doctrinal, you know, positions of ours? Just thought it would be good for you to comment on that. Uh, you're on mute, Sachin. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. So <clears throat> while I was reading about the background of Corinthians, many. Indian fast developed metropolitan cities came to my mind. Not to name few, but we have seen sudden growth of cities 
sudden uh, overnight people became rich and we have seen such a lot uh, rise of crime rise of uh, inequality uh, rise of um, cases reported against women and then i suddenly see it it talks about it, it, it also visualized the same thing in korean that was happening it was there the inequality was happening uh, the people who were just new with the faith often being burdened with the culture culture can be quite overwhelming at time drawing line is is often a very difficult thing uh, and i felt that applies to us at this time a lot and i think as next week next week and that's why i wanted each aspect to be brought up next week because then we also see how he has brought up and how we we can draw from it uh, conclusion so drawing conclusion i leave it to next week if that's okay with you but i felt more many of the situation if we look around we obviously find it we find that and i think we can draw a lot of guiding principle uh, as you rightly said <clears throat> theological principles that we can bring absolutely yes but as you go one by one i think it would be good uh, if we start putting okay from this issue i think these are the principles that we can draw these are the guidelines good for that perhaps not good for here so i think next we uh, next time it would be quite good when we talk about marriage okay these are a no no these are perhaps the guideline that existed at that time uh, would be quite helpful that's what i feel any other comments uh, on on the genre how um, will it how it will help each of us when we see the letters especially the uh, when when this, they, they do the um, what is how the argument is handled how one issue continues throughout this thing how it can help us to not to draw take one specific this thing but i remember when we when we went we were in uh, oman Uh, Shanti was expecting with Anna, and that time I don't know. I I grew my hair. Jimmy, me, and Anna, three of us had same hair, right? Absolutely. So the, the church we used to do that very helping, very nice, loving church. Uh, we used to fellowship, and they used to say, "Who oh, they used to tell me, sister scarf nahi lagati kya? Yes, head head. She doesn't cover her head. And people used to complain them. Ye why is he growing long hair? Correct. And 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 often many uh, orthodox churches that we see uh, covering is uh, an expected uh, outcome right when you enter you cover your head now not to say something right or wrong but those who are asked we could we are able to share why how it is uh, there is a big uh, in in our indian context and in cultural this thing eating food offered to the idols is is a big topic so i see how 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 this is going to help us and how we can draw i know there would be still few would feel that no i don't feel comfortable uh, and which also we have to see yes perhaps um uh because these are guidelines this we would not pet a, a rule and i think something i'm looking forward to uh hear uh, others view as we put something into guidelines something into a no no something into a principle But the genres is helping. So, how how is your experience? Suri Murthy, you have been silent today. Anil and Rekha, any comments? <clears throat> I think one other. Uh, I don't know. You probably may have mentioned it, but I missed it. one of the other issues that was troubling them was this issue of uh, uh, uh spiritual gifts and speaking in tongues you know gifts of spirit whether you know they were permanent they are to be continued to this day and all that sort of thing i think that was another controversy that was 
mugging them and think Paul mentioned that somewhere, right? Yes, that's also one of the thing he <clears throat> covered under worship. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Sachin mentioned uh, was mm. there someone else commenting? No. I think Surimurti was about to say something. Oh, Surimurti, go ahead. Oh, okay. You're on mute. You were talking about food offered to idols. Big problem here. That is mm -hmm. one of the problem that is discussed, which we are going to uh, uh, learn next week. Mm. Yeah. Here I was when I was working in the bank. A lot of people used to meet me, and they usually used to come with. Uh, uh, what do you say? What do you call that? Prasad. Prasad. Ah, prasad. Prasad. <laughs> yeah. Prasad of this temple, that temple. And I, every time I used to politely refuse to take that. It is not a food, it is a question of food. When you take that, it gives the impression you share their belief. So, so all the people in three or four districts, they were knowing that Suri Murthy is not taking prasad. So interesting, because interesting and somewhat confusing also in in. In Corinthians, when we read Corinthians, so so you say you are going to discuss it next week. Correct, because those things we cannot do as we do uh, with your our regular style, which is survey. We'll uh, and I felt that we need to uh, cover it, so I want to take an effort. It will be interesting. It will be interesting from Indian. Indian perspective yes and i think you, you all of your inputs would make that uh, discussion fruitful right reka go ahead yeah well i was thinking in the roman world uh, everything was topsy turvy the morals were loose everything was loose so when they these slaves they came here they were they thought that now that they are in power they would have the money and to do anything they wanted so they were also had loose principles and so to teach them i mean like if you're if you're in power you think you can do anything and so to teach them it takes time so they, these people had to really, uh, I think, change completely their way of thinking. So that really led to a lot of problems. Absolutely. Like the Romans uh, visiting the, the, the prostitute was a very okay thing for them. Mm. And here is now Apostle Paul is teaching to this newly formed city. Open mm. people became overnight rich or slaves. Mm. Well, this is the lifestyle now changed by Christ and yeah. now they have to, to go through it. So I can just put put ourselves into their shoes and I can see it would have been a great challenge for them. Yeah, Correct. yeah. To stand out for Christ would have been a, a big thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Wholesale change. Yeah. Yes. Sachin, you are referring to long hair. Uh, uh, I, I couldn't catch what you actually said. Did you say that it was okay in the Oman church to have long hair? No. The, the church members there were uh, orthodox and they are this thing, I mean, conservative and they are this thing. So for them, uh, a man with long hair made them uncomfortable. And they were feeling why a man should have a, a long hair. Why is he not... Uh, how, why is he not cutting the hair? Why is he not making the short hair? 
so no they didn't stop us from coming fellowshipping uh, they didn't stop loving us but yes they had that concern uh, they had the concern if some uh, ladies are not covering their head while in the church but that never reached uh, as then you should not enter if you are not covering but they had the thought process that it should be done Surya, you're cutting off. Yeah. Can't hear you. Can I say something? Yes, Bertie, please. I think you can see the two eyes in the darkness. Why? What happened? <laughs> no, no power. <laughs> there is. Uh, is that extra power that is uh, you're going to hear from me? Uh, uh, to say it in a nutshell, we have to take a stand for Jesus Christ, right? Right or wrong? We have to take a stand for Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what Paul was addressing was even now, you know, pastors address certain issues which are some uh, sometimes a problem in the church and uh, should tell us what the Christian life is, the new lifestyle of a Christian. You know, uh, even Jesus Christ said, you know, he who does not confess me among uh, men, you know, uh, when the Son of Man comes, he will be ashamed of him, you know, and will not confess his name to his father confess our names to our father because we did not confess his name. It's very important that we uh, we are being discipled in the kingdom of God way. They're discipled in the new lifestyle of which is uh, which is Jesus Christ's lifestyle, the kingdom of God ways. And uh, as Suramuthi said about the prasad, the same was happened to me. I But at all times I would refuse the prasad. And I don't know what they spoke behind the backs, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I suppose it could have, uh, they would have uh, uh, realized and, you know, sometimes they do ask, what is this and all that. But I'll tell you something very interesting. I think I'll get to the point. When I joined Air India and uh, during the training sessions, uh, during the, what do you call, yeah, the training that, you know, during the training time, uh, when we got together uh, in one of the sessions, somebody asked, uh, you know, as if to say, trying to make fun. Is there anybody who's a virgin here in the among the in the batch? Uh, you know, so I raised my hand immediately on top. I raised, and all were shocked to hear that. I mean, <laughs> I know Anil is laughing. Uh, Anil, I suppose you were virgin as well. I suppose before marriage, uh, I take it. <laughs> and so I hope so. All the others, if not. Of course, don't lose heart. We are forgiven in Christ <laughs> and we are a new creation. But my point is, uh, I took a stand. I said, you know, I was, I mean, <laughs> you'll, you'll, I mean, you will agree that it took courage, you know, for me. You know, now all these fellows, you know, uh, girls and boys and all who have been, uh, uh, who have been selected. And these are trainee classes on. And during one of the sessions, uh, this question was put. As if to say, you know, but nobody put uh, besides me, no one else put the hands up. And uh, what to tell you? I mean, he appreciated it. That that instructor uh, in, uh, appreciated it, you know. And uh, uh, that's what I'm saying. Uh, when we are being taught now, discipled in Christ, we have you know given our lives over to Christ. We are in Christ, and we are discipled uh, in the way that Christ would lead the servants. Uh, in our case. Uh, Superintendent uh, Zachariah, then uh, Pastor Sachin, Pastor Praveen. They have the, this thing, um, and they have the authority and they have uh, uh, the obligation. They have, uh, you know, in, uh, they have answerable to God to teach us the right and good way. And we are learning. We are learning. As you know, we are all sinners <laughs> in the past. And we are from sinners, we turn saints. And when we hear some of these testimonies, my, my, what <laughs> Some fellows, some people, as the Bible, you know, Bible doesn't hide anything. I uh, hope I'm not confusing you all that we are to take a stand for Christ in our new life in Christ. And of course, besides the discipling, we all have to be, you know, 
supporting the Lord's work, that is, proclaim the gospel uh, so, to the others. We can't change hearts. God does it, but we are not to hide uh, either the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we have, as the Holy Spirit leads us, we uh, uh, we proclaim, and and our church is doing it very well. And I thank, and I'm happy to be, you know, uh, associated with the church so long. And I've learned so many things, and have many many happy times. Uh, yeah. So uh, now now. Uh, Pastor Praveen, as a pastor, such as I said, he'll cover certain issues more in depth. It will help us definitely. But my point is that we keep to the uh, keep to our new new life in Christ, keep to our new lifestyle, keep to our teachings as the Bible reveals, and it's obligated oh, for the pastors to teach the truth, so that we grow thereby, and uh, we also do what Christ tells us to go proclaim the gospel, you know, and we are doing it collectively, individually, as the Holy Spirit leads us. Thank you. Thank you, Bertie. Uh, first, um, being such an encouragement uh, and sharing your conviction and, and, and encouraging all of us to when such time comes and not just when time comes, over and everything else we have to stand for christ stand for our conviction uh, and and it is not our strength it is god through christ by the power of the spirit empowers yeah. us to become more and more like him in whose image we are made yeah so, let me just interrupt you pastor Sachin. and god gives us the help and courage that's the that's why we are able to do what we do uh, you see, it requires courage from the Holy, given by the Holy Spirit, gives uh, helps us to give the conviction, yeah, commitment, but the courage is important. The help that we need from the Holy Spirit. So we have to, what is called, lean on, rely and trust the Holy Spirit to lead us in Christ, Christ-like ways and to conform to Christ more and more. We are learning and we are growing and that's a good thing for us. Very true, Bertie. That's why when we said be in commune with our father so that we can hear the whispers of the holy spirit to know what he is guiding us and that can yes. only be possible when we are in him mr session yes sir i would like to say something please one of my favorite versions of the bible is nlt Mm -hmm. Life study Bible. That goes through some aspects which we have discussed for each each book of the Bible, like Corinthians or Peter mm -hmm. or James. The context, why it was written. In what context it happened, and the genre also. Uh, I think it will be helpful to read that. Thank you. Yes. Sorry, which which version was this, Suremurti? NLT. NLT. And or oh, New Living Translation. New Living Translation. Yes. yes. Is it a study Bible you're referring to or just the New Living no. Translation? No. NLT has several versions. Okay. One big book is there that is Life Study Application. That is a deep study. So, before opening any book, they first go through the context and the genre, why it was written. So, same thing which you are covering. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Today, Murthy, is that available online? Is it a free uh, online Bible? You can purchase it cheap in Kindle. Oh. Kindle. It's okay. very cheap. <laughs> You know, uh, there is an application called Bible Gateway. If you download that, it comes with, I, there is a, I think, a small subscription per month. I'm 
I don't know, two dollars, three dollars a month or something. But that comes along with uh, okay. about 15, 20 uh, commentaries, references, and so on. Mm -hmm. You know, and one of the good. I have seen that advertisements, but the problem with we Indians is that how are we going to remit in dollars? No, I'm sure there must be an Indian option too. There must be in rupees or so on, something no, like that. No, no, no. Nowadays, uh, what they do, uh, one good thing, and I think you, all of you have noticed, so anytime you want to do any purchase, whichever gateway you use, they would provide an option. Would you like to pay equivalent in Indian uh, rupees x I thought so. or dollar y not in gateway Achha. each have different this thing like i i remember shanti has android phone she has every other bible uh version free i have yeah. the paid version i use the live gateway and i wanted to do that study so i bought each of these but the good thing is the online version costs quite cheaper like 700 as compared to 5000 for a physical book. But then the one she used, she absolutely, she has every version when it's needed and it's free. Yeah, same as with the Bible Gateway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but 30, 40 versions, NLT, Message, Amplify, all kinds of uh, uh, Bible versions are there. So let us not confuse ourselves. <laughs> I'm just joking. Let us stick to one. <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you recommend? NLT, right? NLT, NLT. I am for NLT. You know, uh, just, just sharing, not to um, support any of this thing. When we are studying the New Testament survey, so our professor, Dr. Michael Morrison, he said, if the two versions are saying the same thing, you probably don't need to go back to the his of the the Greek to the this thing. It if they are going to the same thing, you're probably on the right path. You don't need to break the now the word. Now go into this one. But when we are reading, they are referring the single person uh, versions to be avoided when we are read when we are learning or studying, like the message, the the voice. Voice is my quite favorite. If you, you should read once in a while, it's quite quite bold when it has to, it's uh, ask us to do something. But then for studying purpose, it's good to refer to the Bible version, which have many scholars have referred to and come to a conclusion and did that. We have got, we have got only a few more years to live. <laughs> so we have to restrict our study to only a few more things. Only a few things. <laughs> that, that, that thought always strikes me. We have got only a few more years. Yes, to all of us, once in a while. I see Mr. Franklin Poppins has joined. If you can just say hello, it would be nice to see you or hear from you. Otherwise, we have reached to the end of our study. We'll just wait a while for Mr. Poppins to say hello, else I will close with the word of prayer and submit all of us into his grace. I think he is not able to. Yeah, I just got a call from Mr. Franklin. His audio has some issues, but he says a very good evening to all of us. Uh, he's so good to see all of us here. So let me now uh, close it with the word of prayer. Join with me. Our Father and our God, we come before you boldly through the finished work of Christ by the Spirit, O Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for uh, your fellowship, O Lord, that is always with us and which provides us such a wonderful time to meet other people, to fellowship with them through your fellowship, O oh Lord God. I want to thank you for each one of us who joined. Thank you, Lord, that you uh, gave me um, your wisdom, your understanding as I bring in the topic. But it's not my word, 
It's not what I taught, but it's your Holy Spirit that will touch their heart and continue to teach them, O oh Lord God. And it is our prayer. Let each one of you be remain in you, O oh Lord God. Because it is in you we have life. We thank you for each one of us. Thank you for uh, uh, the life that you have given us, O oh Lord God. We rejoice it for this gift of life. We submit ourselves into your hand. And Lord, we pray that you continue to carry us, continue to lead us, continue to keep us together. With that, Lord, with thanksgiving, we ask this all in the mighty, precious and loving name of Jesus. Amen.